ahead and kick the meeting off. You got it. All right. So I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33, a meeting of the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So welcome everyone, nice to see you all. Nice to see you Dr. Shabazz and Irv <laughs> and Hala and hopefully um, our, other, our others will be here soon. Um, so we're going to start with some announcements. Uh, we haven't uh, met actually since Dr. Jemison resigned. And so I'd like to take a moment for us to thank her for her valuable contributions and just really take a moment to honor um, everything that she brought to the assembly and that I think she'll continue to bring to the assembly. Um, and we will in uh, later in the um, member reports, if there's something that you'd like to add, um, please do so during the member reports. If you'd like to make an offering or, or add anything to that. I'm uh, moving on. I'm pleased to announce that the town council voted to move the $210,000 into the reparation stabilization fund last Monday. So that's something uh, to be really, uh, you know, excited and happy about and um, was pleased to see that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be at that meeting, but it did happen. I can, <laughs> can verify that. Um, I also wanted to share that Jennifer and Paul and I attended um, a really excellent conference yesterday that was sponsored by Northeastern University called Racial Redress and Reparations. Um, and uh, maybe others were there as well, uh, but I, I wanted to note that it was great. And at some point, if we can get together some notes to share, we will. And all right, that's it for announcements. And so we're just gonna um, do a quick agenda review. Um, and Jennifer, I'm sorry, we should have covered this, but do we have any minutes to uh, approve tonight? No, the packet went out so late. So I didn't include the minutes because then nobody would have been able to read them, so. Absolutely. That'll okay. start off for the next meeting. That sounds great. Okay, excellent. So for tonight, uh, we're going to start, of course, with our public comment, and then uh, we'll do a quick review of our meeting etiquette. Um, we will talk about the proposed items for the AHRA website. Really not talk, but try to vote on them. I've prepared a motion for us. Uh, they were in the 11-4 packet. We briefly looked at them, but between Jennifer and I, we couldn't remember exactly what happened. They didn't get voted on though. <laughs> so we're hoping to do that tonight. And then if Alexis um, does come to the meeting, uh, she will have um, an update on the Reckoning in Boston viewing plan. So we'll hold off and, and wait for her for that. And then we have a debrief from the town council presentation that happened on 11-8. And then I am going to present a, a resetting of the AHRA strategy, um, which I apologize. I did prepare some slides to help us with that. And I apologize that I didn't get them to you sooner. I've um, really been working hard on getting all of the thoughts and feedback and everything together. And so I didn't get it kind of into form um, until just before the meeting. So I'll share those when we get to that, to that portion. And then um, again, we'll have public comment and member reports. Um, actually, before public comment, it's not showing on our agenda tonight. It was just probably a, a minor oversight to put a BAM update. 
Um, there was a meeting, a joint meeting of BAM and the AHRA. So we'll um, ask one of our assembly members who participated in that to give an update. And then I believe that Herb will have an update on the census. And then during member reports, um, we will have an opportunity for that. And then we'll finish up with upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules. So any questions before we go ahead and move on to public comment? And if you wanna just raise your hand, if you have a question, that would be great. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to public comment. During the public comment period, one of the co-chairs will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. And, and just to, to mention, you, you never have to provide your full address. Um, so if, you're, if you just wanna say you're from Amherst or wherever you're from, that's fine. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Take a look. So I see we do have Will Norris would like to make a public comment. So just one second, Will. Your hand went down. Just go ahead and there you go. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So, Will, you should be able to speak. Uh, let's try it again. Here we go. Yep, the wrong folks got moved into the room. So, I'm. Oh, sorry about that. It's just kind of moving around on me here. I think that Will should be, okay. Yeah, I, I think, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> um, we can. Well, yeah, I really just wanted to let everyone know that um, it's been a few weeks, but I'm, I'm here again, just listening in. Um, and I'm hoping to, um, over the coming weeks and months, and move forward with <laughs> um, my reporting um, and I, you know, just want everyone to be aware of that. I'll be kind of uh, talking to whoever I can, and uh, I hope to reach out to people individually for conversations if, if um, everyone's amenable. So, um, just wanted that to be on on folks' radar. So, and and you know, again, just wanted to be transparent about <laughs> that. I'm here listening in. So, thanks. Thank you, Will. If anybody else wishes to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, so great. So I'm just juggling moving around between, between things here. So thanks for your patience. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our action and discussion items um, and just starting with our meeting etiquette reminder, and I will bring up our ropes here, share the screen. Um, let's see. I think I'm sharing. Is that working for everyone? Okay, I did it <laughs> without canceling the meeting. Um, so just, yeah, we wanna take a quick peek at the ropes again. It's been a few weeks since we've met. All right. So I'm going to stop the share here. I think. <laughs> yep. All right. Good. Okay. So um, we can move to the proposed items for the AHRA website. And they were available in the November 4th packet. 
I'm going to once again share my screen. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> You're much quicker at this than I am. Um, so I do have a motion prepared. I'm not sure if folks had a chance to review these items when we initially, when they were initially brought in. Um, but why don't we just take a moment if there are, um, just take a moment to sort of look over them again. And as a reminder, these items are being submitted um, as they come through. Uh, assembly members are submitting them to Jennifer and then Jennifer is compiling them for us on a weekly or biweekly or at, at whatever pace they're coming in at. And then um, as we vote on them, Jennifer will add them to the AHR website. Um, and so if there's something in this list that you'd like to pull out um, that you would not like or that you'd like to discuss, when I make the motion after it's seconded, we'll just have an opportunity um, for that to happen, uh, for, for anything to be pulled out. Otherwise, if everything looks good, we can just go ahead and vote on the motion. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the motion. All right, let's see. All right. So I'm going to read the motion. Uh, this is a motion to approve the items submitted to the 11-4-2021 packet for publication on the AHRA website. I second it. Shabazz. And uh, do we have any discussion on this? OK, great. Then we'll go ahead and move to a roll call vote. And so, uh, Irv, how do you vote? Oh, Irv, you're muted. I'm, I'm, I said I'm going to abstain because I did really to vote on yes or nay or yes when I really didn't go through and look at it would be not right, so I'm going to abstain. Okay, are we, can we still, that doesn't impact our quorum, does it, Jennifer? Can we still, we can still move forward with the vote? Okay, great. Um, Shabazz, Dr. Shabazz, how do you vote? Shabazz, yes. And Hala, how do you vote? Lord, I. And Miller, I. So this um, vote, this motion, excuse me, passes um, three yes, zero no, and one uh, abstain. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to bring that back to council, uh, not council, but to the clerk's office before I go ahead and Take say that's final because you have one who abstained and then there's one, two who are absent. Yes. Okay, so yeah, let's clarify that for sure. And then if we have to do something for next time, just let me know and we'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> All right, so let's then move on. Uh, we do not have Alexis here yet, so I'm gonna skip the reckoning in Boston for now. I can say though that um, she has a plan and it looks like it's moving forward um, and she can talk more about that if and when she's here. So we'll move on to the debrief. I thought this is sort of seems like a long time ago at this point, but there was a presentation to the town council based on our initial report. So I wanted to give folks the opportunity to offer any comments or feedback or um, anything really pertaining 
and just keeping our, our ropes in mind and um, but anything really, if there's an, if there's anything that you'd like to share, this is a, this is the opportunity. And you can just raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, um, I'm glad that we that we had that opportunity to present, and I think that overall, I was. Um, I, I feel I just want to express that I feel that we did a lot of work in a really short period of time and um, came up with a really uh, robust and rich report in such a short period of time. And I think the council really appreciated that. And I personally received a lot of really great feedback about the um, dedication and commitment of this body. And so I just want to express that. All right, so here we go. <laughs> um, I have been thinking, and I'm just going to change my view here. Um, there we go, it's better. So I've been thinking a lot about our work and our timeline and everything that we have been asked to accomplish in our charge. Um, I've been doing a lot of research. I look very, very deeply at what California is doing. Dr. Shabazz had brought that to my attention now a few weeks back. And uh, yesterday during the conference at Northeastern, there were folks there that were working on that. And so I did a deep dive into that. I looked at what other communities are doing and have done. And Dr. Jemison also provided some really excellent feedback um, to me as well when in um, uh, sort of with her resignation. Um, so with all of that in mind, I have a proposal to bring to you um, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And um, I will, I'm, I guess it's, it's gonna be, Let's see how this is gonna look here. So share screen, there we go. All right, does everyone see that? No, okay. Now? Yeah? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you see it. Er, great, Hala. Dr. Shabazz, do you see it? Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Okay. So one of the things that has really, um, you know, that I've been reflecting on is the timeline that we have been asked to complete this work in and sort of how much time we've spent over the past several months really dealing with just trying to land as a body, understand um, what it is that our charge is asking of us, um, and also sort of being bogged down into some of the administrative aspects of, you know, um, running a municipal or municipal committee. And so um, I'm proposing that we take a longer view approach. And this is something that Dr. Jemison also recommended. Um, and you know, there's there was a there was a conversation that happened again yesterday in this conference about um, sort of meeting like understanding reparations now and the urgency and also understanding the importance of really, um, taking the time to develop a thoughtful plan. Um, so I'm proposing that we request that our charge be extended to June 2023, which, um, as I said in the advantages, would give us another budget cycle and sort of take that particular pressure off right now. And it's also a chicken and egg debacle, you know, sort of it's a chicken and egg dilemma that we have here um, when it comes to 
developing the plan and um, the budget. I'm suggesting that we take a little pressure off and meet once or twice per month as a group, as opposed to meeting weekly. It will give us a little more time in between to get organized um, and also allow us to organize into subcommittees in between meetings. Just some of the advantages I mentioned here are um, sort of to lift us out of the weeds, ensure the process is truly community generated, take the budget cycle pressure off, and also take into consideration that we'll um, be getting a new DEI director, there was a new council, there's a sort of a lot of change happening right now. Um, so that's that's sort of the, the broad picture of what I'm suggesting. And I'm gonna go through this and then we can just open it up for discussion. Um, I also thought about how this is sort of like a startup in the sense that reparations is, the, the conversation about reparations is not new by any means, but developing municipal uh, local plans is new and it requires innovation and it requires funding. And so I am suggesting that we use some portion of the seed money, the $210,000 that we have to actually develop the plan. Um, and so here we would hire tier one and tier two consultants to help us in areas like education, community outreach, uh, economic marketing research. We could hire expert witnesses to come and give testimony. Uh, we'd be able to develop our census and website and host and develop educational events. And so for a timeline here, I'm suggesting that we have three phases. Phase one is our data collection. So this is where we're really working to win the hearts and minds. And those are Dr. Jemison's words. Um, and really building awareness and education for ourselves and our community and people outside of our community even. This would allow us to bring in expert testimony at public meetings. It would allow us to expand our historical and modern research and collaborate with public schools and anchor institutions. This phase would also include community engagement and communications. We um, would develop a multi-level community engagement process um, that would allow us to really help for this to be a community-led and um, truly com community engaged process. And then also in this phase, we would be developing the foundation further. So the black census, we could begin any state legislation that we may wanna get the ball rolling on and we could work on documenting our process. So that's phase one. And I see that happening between January. Um, I kind of figured with the holidays in December, we may wanna um, limit our meetings and maybe have one more meeting in December to really uh, sort of hash through some of this, but January through June, um, and excuse me, that should say January 2023 to through June 2022. And then phase two would be the development of a draft plan. And this is where we would take all of the data that we collected through our um, educational process, our community engagement process, uh, we would have partnered with professionals um, and then in that process here in phase two we'll develop our criteria and our eligibility and make recommendations for a plan and here it doesn't mean that we won't still be engaging with community in phase two um, but the robust portion of that will occur in phase one and that will be from july through september 2022 and then phase three, um, which is again, I'm assuming with the chicken and egg piece of things that the um, phase three is then, okay, we've done this awareness work, we've done education work, we've collected community data, we've engaged with our community, and now um, we've developed this draft plan and we're gonna identify funding sources based on an actual plan. Um, and we can develop funding sources through the town, through anchor institutions, and through private residences, private residents, excuse me. And that would be between, our, that, so that would basically take place in our next budget cycle. And again, this doesn't mean that we couldn't 
be working on those things, but it would take the pressure off of us right now, trying to get what we're going to get um, and, and rushing through and having to send people out and advocating. Um, you know, I think that with the new town council coming, with the DEI director coming, with the sort of groundswell of support that's coming for these things, next budget cycle, we're gonna be perfectly positioned and we're gonna have an actual plan. So I'm gonna stop <laughs> um, and just open it up for discussion and, um, Please feel free to raise your hand at any time right now. And uh, Dr. Shabazz, yes. Well, uh, thank you for <clears throat> this uh, proposal, this uh, uh, and resetting idea. There are some compelling uh, points uh, that it um, puts on my mind, but uh, before um, going into that, I do um, have just some um, questions, terms, things I'm not clear on. One being tier one and tier two consultants. I'm not sure what that, um, if, if I'm clear on that. Yeah, that's a really good question. So I, you know, and I actually took that from, I think it was California. And the way, I think the way that it's described is, um, we may have some consultants that we're hiring that are like profess professional organizations that we want to work with. Um, and then we may have sort of boots on the ground, like ambassador type um, consultants that we want to pay um, and compensate for their work in whatever portion, whether we're talking about education or um, community engagement or any one of those areas. So that could really be defined by us, but it's just to give us flexibility and also to sort of signal that we want to be able to compensate people who are going to help with this work. Okay. Hala? Oh, yeah. I'm wondering if um, we're not going to, I will need more time to vote on this. And I was wondering if we could get, the, if I could get this, we could get this information so I could read it and internalize it a little differently. I do thank you for this work. And then I have a question about, do we bring the proposal to town council? Cause then they need to vote, would need to vote to extend the charge. And I don't know about that. Yeah, so I did a little research on that in terms of what our pathway would be. So first just to acknowledge, absolutely. Um, this will be sent out tonight to everybody and this proposal will not need to be voted on tonight we can you know work on we can do we can talk about it tonight and then um, think about it between now and the next meeting tweak it whatever everybody would like to do um, what we can I did bring a motion that would, um, and I can actually just, let me see, I can show it to you here. So I did bring a motion that would uh, allow us to approve the request to the town council for an extension. So if that portion, if we felt like we wanted to vote on just that, um, which would mean that we would follow the process. I asked Councillor Henneke to um, outline the process for me and also lays on Councillor Brewer. Um, so I do know what the process is. If this body um, wants to approve that we request the town council extend, uh, then we can, I can go forward with that process if we ap approve that tonight. Thank you. How about you, Irv? Any questions? Or comments or? You know what? I uh, appreciate the effort and I appreciate everything that you've done with this. Uh, however, there is it's a, a, a lot to digest and to think about. Um, and and I, you know, when you were going when you were going through it, like incredible number of questions came out. Mm -hmm. And and I have questions about sequencing, mm -hmm. uh, and also about expenditure of funds, um, and at this particular point in time, I think that there's a lot of things that really need to 
that are precursors to this that need to be thought about uh, beforehand. Uh, and uh, so I, I just need some time to sit with this and think about it and jot some things down in relationship to it. However, I do agree that the motion that you have, uh, we definitely need to vote on that extension tonight. Great, thank you. And you know, now that this, um, yeah, one sec, Jennifer. Um, now that this has been um, sort of the proposal has been presented in the public body, it gives us the opportunity to go home with it and um, you know think about it um, and you know, work on um, modifying it, amending it, doing all of those things on our own, and then being able to bring that back. <laughs> um, it's hard to, even though I didn't have it ready in advance anyway, but it's hard with the open meeting law. So I'm glad it's been presented. Um, do What about what Irv just said with respect to, you know, I just want to acknowledge that Requesting an extension, I, I really, really feel strongly that we will, and, and I think Dr. Jemison really felt strongly as well, that we will create a much better and truly community-led you know, uh, reparations plan if we have more time. And I feel like we will have the support um, of the council to do that. But I also recognize that that means more time on this um, committee and assembly than maybe one anticipated. And so, um, but uh, also thinking about meeting less frequently as well. So um, Jennifer, uh, before or before you go, Irv, um, Jennifer had her hand raised. Yeah, I just, I wanted to check in with how that process works, works with you extending it out as a counselor. Did did you talk to anyone about that? I don't know that there's a problem or not, but usually we don't have counselors sitting on boards and committees for that length of a time. So, I... Yeah, I don't know how it would impact in terms of my staying on um, necessarily, like if, if the uh, council determined. I think the council, I think that there's some uh, support for me staying here until the end of the current charge. I'm not sure I've had, because literally I, the only questions I've asked so far are to Councillor Henneke to understand the process for even trying to get an extension and then um, Councillor Brewer, you know, more just about the process. So we, I don't really have a good answer to that question with respect to me being on the committee. Um, and of course, my desire would be to stay on the committee and see it through. And um, I would understand if uh, there were good reasons for that not to be the case. Yeah, I was oh, just thinking because your chair, that's all, like. Yeah, that's a big deal. I know. And I see Pat has her hand raised. So maybe Pat wants to offer something. Um, let's see. We'll bring you in, Pat, one second. I, every time I go down to the Zoom, it keeps asking me if I want to leave. I guess I'm going to have to stop the share for a second. I can let Pat in if that's okay. easier for you. Yeah, I can do that good. part. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, from everything I understand, um, a counselor sitting on a time limited committee is appropriate. And one of the examples is the elementary school building committee. It has counselors on it, but it's a time limited committee. And I will do a double check about this. I know that we voted not to have counselors sitting on an ongoing town committee. Uh, but since this still, even if you extend is time limit, I think it would be appropriate. And as I said, I will check with uh, Lynn um, to, uh, this evening or tomorrow and get back to you with a clearer answer than that. But I think it is fine. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, Irv. I, um, what I think is that um, we need to just bring the motion to the floor 
now have someone formally move on the motion to extend and get that out of the way and then move on to whatever other discussions we want to have around the other items you presented. All right. Do you, oh, here, let me pull that back up here. Oh, sorry, Dr. Shabazz. So, um, yeah, I take a I take a different view on that. If the question of the strategy reset um, requires additional time to think about it, in terms of whether that's the the right direction to go, then um, there may not be a need to uh, to extend. The extending to me is premised upon if you feel that you know we need we're in need of a strategy reset. Um, I'm not sure we're in need of a strategy reset. I need to get my head around uh, more around um, these points presented, as well as to get my uh, get a sense of um, how this reset with this addition of time will produce a better a better plan. Um, so that, so for me, I'm not in an urgency uh, tonight to, uh, to, you know, on the question of the need to extend our work to, uh, to January, to June, 2023. Yeah, Jennifer. I, um, you know, obviously I don't have a stake. I think whatever time you guys need to make this work meaningful is important, but do remember that there are two members that aren't here that that makes a big difference without them being here. Um, so you should just take that into consideration too, because it's, you know, that's a, a considerable amount of time and a different commitment than what they signed up for. Yeah, I, I really honor that. And I think that that makes a lot of sense with digesting the proposal, with digesting this potential motion. I do feel like um, giving the other members an opportunity to consider all of that is really important. I just want to add like on a personal note that I feel like the pace that we were working at um, was really, really hard for me personally, and I know that I'm in the chair spot, but it's, it was, it's a lot of work and it gives us very little time in between to process um, and to gather information and to get it to Jennifer in time that people can see it and, and all of those things. Um, and I really struggled with, you know, feeling like, and I, I would not speak for Dr. Jemison by any means, but I consider that, you know, um, Dr. Jemison, a loss um, to this committee, and I just worry for us that if we are moving fast and furious, um, we're going to burn out. And um, so I just put that out there. And I don't know, Dr. Shabazz and uh, Dr. Rhodes, you still have your hand raised. Did Dr. Shabazz, did you want to speak? Please. Yes, my additional point was that. I thank you, Jennifer, for what you offered. The thing that I would add as well, there's also this question of whether we're going to try to um, uh, get ourselves back up to a seven member body. And so there's this additional person even in the, uh, uh, that, that, that's also a question mark here. So, you know, a lot of these things go into thinking about the resetting, the, the strategy resetting, but also go into thinking about the, uh, the question of extending, requesting an extension of our charge. And uh, Dr. Rhodes? Well, and, uh, I, I agree, you know, having more voices weigh in on this is, would be uh, really good to do. However, at the end of the day, I, you know, and, and I, again, I would like for that to happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, when I look at it overall, trying to get funding and do a funding request with one budget cycle that's truncated as it is in terms of when we came on board and when we got chartered as a committee is just too short of a time. Uh, and, and, and so I know that, you know, at least deep in my heart, I believe that no matter what, when the other people are on board, they're going to agree with that. So I have no problem in terms of letting other people weigh in. Thank 
Thank you, Irv. Uh, are there, oh, Dr. Schwaz. Thank you. So what I add to, would like to add to this in terms of my, my thinking about the pacing issue, uh, look, reflecting on the past few months as you have, um, uh, um, as a, uh, Madam Chair, and also thinking in terms of um, the, the 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 question of the you know if we are trying to add um, a seventh get back to a seventh person or not you know the and and, and the question of the strategy that comes into play here uh, so I wouldn't be averse to trying to go to an every other week kind of meeting format as opposed to a weekly meeting format I think part of the weekly was the pressure of an October report when we just came into being in September. Uh, the part of the pressure was the budget cycle and the desire to try and weigh in on, uh, uh, to first of all, inform ourselves about potential funding streams, but then as well to uh, recognizing the deadlines for putting uh, forward uh, reparative justice, this reparations uh, plan we're developing as uh, uh, for some of these funds, it, it it was a grueling it was a grueling pace, uh, but it was for that sp specific set of reasons. Um, so I'm not averse at all to thinking going forward to an every other week kind of meeting for the reasons that have been mentioned giving ourselves time to collect information, to approach people, to, to uh, perhaps make presentations, to uh, get all of this to uh, 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 Ms. Moyston in time for uh, posting and agenda setting and open meeting law compliance. So absolutely, I, I could see making a decision as we do build our calendar out going forward to, uh, to look more in the direction of, of a bi-monthly or, or every other week type of meeting. So I, with that said, uh, let me turn more to the strategy question. I view the strategy, our, our initial strategy was about the question of, uh, first of all, creating a fund, creating a financial instrument, a fund, out of which reparative justice efforts could be financed, not as a one and done, but over time, as there are as as the problems that have occurred have developed over time, the solutions are perhaps things that will need to be addressed over time. And so you build a fund, a kind of endowment that uh, would be able to fund those uh, efforts to repair, okay? Then the question becomes, um, the other part of our, our charge, our work in the development of this plan is the ongoing mechanism as the efforts are made to build this fund, what are the mechanisms going forward by which the reparative efforts could be determined, could be assessed, could be um, recommended to the council for the council to then approve. And then here's the fund that those efforts to repair would come from. So it's how to plan that out, how to plan out that mechanism, that successor group, as we have called it. And so part of my concern with this extension, are we, in a way, sort of de facto making ourselves the successor body we originally envisioned? Okay. Um, but planning-wise, the view was to present a plan of how we would have a successor group, an ongoing mechanism that would invite from the community of, that, that has been harmed, 
ideas of, of, of things that could be done to promote reparative justice, this body would like, again, my example I keep going back to being the Community Preservation Act group, that they receive these proposals, they would vet those proposals, they would have hearings on those proposals, they would then recommend those proposals for funding out of the, the fund. So for me, I felt that, and at this point still feel, that that is a doable pro project over the next four months without having to meet every week. In fact, ideally not meeting every week because of how it allows us time to, to get, to, to really do the work and organize the work. So that's my initial sense of a strategy. And then we could present that out in June. The council could then work with that, modify it as they wish. And, uh, but hopefully, you know, if our work was, was, was well done, approve it, approve the creation of the successor body, approve the, the, the work necessary to build the fund that could be an ongoing funding mechanism, not a one and done, but also for those kinds of funds that are like a ARPA that are time bound, the successor body could, could, could again, develop proposals, vet proposals, present to the council those proposals, and take on that work. So right now, that's still the, the process in my mind, and a process, again, not necessarily requiring weekly meetings, but probably requiring that we not meet weekly in order to, to be able to effectively have time to do the work. And I, I need to get my head around some of the points that was raised in uh, our, our chair's uh, uh, proposal of this uh, strategy resetting, maybe look at some of the California information she's looked at, look at some other things she's looking at. So I'm not discounting the presentation. I'm only saying, I'm, as, as, as uh, uh, my comrade Holla uh, said earlier, I just need the time to let some of this sink in, to process this, to look at the information, to mull it over, and then perhaps I could see the need for this, this strategy reset, okay? One of the things floating in my mind is how the community safety reform process unfolded. And here were people uh, meeting furiously, weekly, grueling schedule, all of it open and before the public on television. I watched many an episode this intense amount of work that was done only to then things be bungled along the way toward the end, not being given full time to present their views, the question of whether you know uh, uh, their views were gonna get a full audience before the council or if it was all gonna be distilled through the town manager and what the town manager said would be the final report. It was just badly done at the end. And so, I definitely don't want to go down that path and put in that kind of grueling work to, to then you know have, have things go, go that way. Although it seems though some of it's been corrected. Some things have been, have been uh, uh, you know, gotten back on track. So, but nonetheless, uh, I, I have that going in my head that leads me in thinking in some ways towards reset, towards this time extension rather, in some ways, it still says to me, well, maybe not if de depending on the scope, the scope of what we see as our work. So that's my share on it and in, in terms of trying to give a, articulate a little better where I'm sitting right now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Or before I call on you, I just wanna check in with Hala and see not to, um, <laughs> Just want to check if you had anything that you wanted to add. Um, no, I'm pretty much in a lot of agreement with uh, Dr. Shabazz, but thank you. Um, Dr. Rhodes, sorry. <laughs> so Dr. Shabazz, 
one of the things that I admire about you is that you talk in paragraphs. And it's also one of the things that is, is difficult for a lot of people to, uh, to follow. So what I would like for you to do is tell me what are the three things that you really are recommending? Three of them. And then let's see if we can have a discussion about that. May I, Madam Chair? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a try. So one, I'm recommending we do, as we do our calendar build out, go toward an every other week meeting and not try to continue at a weekly meeting pace. That's number one. Uh, number two, I'd recommend between now and that next meeting, having some opportunity to take a deeper look at the strategy reset that Michelle Miller presented and uh, be able to come back with uh, at the next meeting to have more discussion and um, uh, and see where where we may be in terms of of our work of our strategy going forward. And three, I would say that the um, the the real work at hand right now is to be is is to take clear stock of where we are on the fund, on the financial mechanism, and, um, and kind of prioritize uh, another round of discussion about that for our next meeting, that that be an agenda item, sort of where we are on the, fund, the funding piece. That was impressive, I gotta say. <laughs> I appreciated the question and the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, it you know, it's uh, I really appreciate that, uh, Dr. Shabazz. Uh, one of the things that I, I, when I listen to those three things, I want to come back and swing back to the question at hand, and the big question of at, at hand, uh, and I think we've dispensed with that is uh, in terms of us um, voting on the extension of time that it seems like we're, we're going to agree that we're going to have other people, other people come who are not here come and weigh in on that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, since that's the case, then we're left with the second thing, which is the overall um, presentation that uh, Michelle made and then having time to digest that uh, and having other members also having time to digest it and then coming back and having a more fuller discussion of that. So if I dispense with those two things, uh, then that brings me uh, to the question of, all right, if, we, if those two things are off the table and we're putting those off until a, a further time, what are we wanting to deal with tonight so that we can move ourselves forward? That's a really good question. I just, if I could add a quick note about the proposal um, and just one of the things that I've um, been thinking a lot about, and also again, Dr. Jemison and looking around, I think that the um, opportunity to engage as many people as we can in this process is really important. And I think that engaging professionals and professional facilitators, um, professional, whoever, um, is something that, like the Community Safety Working Group did um, so well, is to engage um, really, really good consultants that could sort of take the 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 work not take the work off of the body but let the body do what they need to do and let the consultants do um you know what they do best and so i just if you look as you begin to look through the plan and when you get a chance um to do that just thinking about each kind of like the last thing that i want to do is rush to develop a plan that um, folks feel, um, you know, was sort of just streamlined through um, without the sort of fullness of the um, community. And also, 
um, I do think we need we need help um, on a on a sort of professional level in some of the areas that we're working in um, because of our time constraints and because in some cases we may not have the actual expertise to do some of the things that we'll want to include and do. So I just want to add that um, when you're sort of thinking through it. Yes, Jennifer. A um, couple of things. One, I just want to speak in regards to Dr. Shabazz's comment about the CSWG and the members and how they were rushed. I think that one of the things was a lot was learned from that process. And a lot of the things that, that a lot of processes that they used were set up for boards and committees and departments that have already been created. And then that is just the way that it's always moved. And so I think it took made us realize that like just because that's the way it's always been done doesn't mean that's the way that it needs to work moving forward. So I think a lot of that was stuck with the CSWG because they were this, you know, uh, new group with new energy that fit outside the box of what we normally have happen in local government. Um, two is there, it's never too late or you know, it's not necessarily never too late, but the ability to ask for an extension is something that can always almost happen, right? Like there's no, I'm not saying that you guys don't need, I'm not weighing in, I'm just trying to let you know that the option to ask for an extension can happen continuously without, although I understand why you would do it now, because it just takes a lot of pressure off um, of feeling like you have to get this done right away. Um, so I do understand that, but again, extensions can always be asked throughout the process. And then, um, consultants, I, I, even though one day I would wish to be, to, to, to be one, there's, um, I think that, you know, this group really, this is a very community driven, this committee is built to have community input. And so that is what needs to drive us. And that's how we get our recommendations. So when it comes to consultants, because A, they are expensive, and it is going to take a big chunk out of the budget, right? But also, you can't rush the consultants because you don't always, rushing a consultant doesn't get you always the work the way that you needed. Two of the reports happened without information from the consultants from the CSWG, right? And then it was added in. So you just, you have to, I mean, not, that has to happen that way. But when you're under pressure and having a consultant come in doesn't always make the needs. And then the process for getting a consultant is very timely too, because it has to go out to bid. Um, so you have to take those things into consideration. So if you are thinking about having a consultant that needs to happen probably sooner than later, because it's about a month to a month and a half before they actually, you get everything done and all the agreements are signed. Thank you. That's so helpful. And, you know, um, I was looking at, and we'll add this to the packet, um, Councillor Ball Milne, she sent over um, a community engagement sort of process that she's been working in partnership, I think, with UMass and maybe a couple of other councillors to develop. And it's a really fantastic process. It hits all the stakeholders. Um, California also put forward two community engagement flow charts that are extremely helpful and that I will also include in the next packet to show um, how we might go about that. And so, um, you know, in terms of consultants, I think it can look different ways, but we definitely want to make sure that we find ways um, to reach as many, because that's what's going to sort of develop the, um, the, the awareness, the education, and also engage the hearts and minds of our community, the more of these people that we can hit and engage with and include in this process and this shared process. Um, the one thing about like whether to extend or not, I do think though we can ask for an extension anytime, I'd rather be proactive so that we can set our schedule out and be not trying to always chase things, but actually be really on top of things and have this uh, plan set forward for us that we can depend on and that we can know um, sort of what we're doing as opposed to trying to like get through, you know, a bunch of stuff and then realize, oh shoot, we need more time. Had we given ourselves more space in between? Um, Cause this is, a, this is an area where processing is really important. I mean, all areas are, but I, I think that in particular for us to process, for the community to process, for the council to process, 
all of that. Um, so thank you though, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, Irv, did, did you have your- Yeah, I, 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 I do. And, and I think that, you know, we really need to think deeply about A, where we are now with ourselves and B, uh, how we wish and what we wish to spend the money on. Now, and when I, when, I, when I say that, we have the money in the stabilization fund, but there is a process that has to be followed in order to spend that money. That, that process includes going through the co town council and getting a two thirds vote, which means you're looking at town council meetings and their schedule. So, 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 so we need to keep that in mind. But the, mo no, the, the, the bigger question and more important question is, how do we organize ourselves to be able to make a decision either now or in the future before we dissolve or, or we're extended uh, in terms of what we want to spend this money on? in the next month, two months, three months, six months, et cetera. That's a, you know, that's a big question. What do we wish to spend it on? Now it's sort of like the dog who caught the car. Now what? So we have to make that decision. And that is not a small decision because whenever you start expending money, it starts coming right back at you in terms of your values and what you really believe in. So that's on our table, that's on our plate right now. Town council and everyone else has done their job. They have put the money at our disposal. We now have to figure out how we want to expend it, spend that money and when. So I'm going to suggest that we um, sort of wrap this discussion up and um, take an opportunity to, between now and the next time we meet, um, reflect on it and be prepared to come to the next meeting with thoughts and input and um, all of that good stuff. And we'll also make sure that our other members are privy to this information and um, so that way um, they can call with any questions or anything like that in between. Um, and then, you know, I'm looking at the clock. It's, it's 7.35 right now. And um, without Alexis here to offer um, her report on the racial reckoning, um, we do have a BAM report. Uh, that I would like to make sure we get to. Um, I'd love for somebody to report out about the meeting. And I'd also love for Irv to talk to us about the Donahue Institute and um, what, um, what came out of that. So uh, is that, does that feel like a good direction to go in at this point to sort of wrap this up and let's move on to the BAM report? All right, let's do it. <laughs> um, and who, if I, I, one, two, or three could give um, all of the above, whoever was there, I'm not sure who was at that um, meeting, but I would love to hear a report of the joint meeting that occurred between the AHRA and BAM on, um, it was last Saturday now, I believe. Let me just get that that date. It was the 27th. Um, so if, if, if um, one of you would like to report on that, that would be great. Yes, I can get the ball started. Um, the, uh, so we actually did not have a quorum of uh, AHRA uh, assembly members. Uh, we went through the motions of uh, accordingly, but we actually did not um, have have an actual quorum of the AHRA. Uh, there was an opportunity, however, for during the time of um, where we were uh, in, as we called it, a joint, a joint meeting uh, that we opened for questions. We opened to sort of share with um, 
uh, members on the uh, uh, there who have been regular members of, uh, of BAM that were present. We, as anticipating it as a public meeting, we also opened um, during that time for non-BAM uh, participants uh, to, to be on hand. So that's where we first met uh, Will Norris, one of our attendees who uh, spoke during public comment. Um, and, um, and, and so we were able to hear uh, from Will the, the, the work that he's, he's doing and his interest in this work that we're doing. Um, once we came to the kind of conclusion of that round of, of questions, um, we then close that out and went back into BAM proper, and that's where Will and others who uh, are not a members of the um, uh, African Heritage Community of Amherst were were excused for the for the duration uh, of that part of the meeting. Um, we did have an opportunity to uh, really discuss and to talk about. Um, engagement, community engagement with the African heritage community. I don't wanna overstep on the black census report that, um, that, that, that Dr. Rhodes will, will bring in. So I'll just sort of leave, leave it short, uh, put, a, put an end to, the, to, to this, uh, this paragraph at this time. Thank you. <laughs> um... Great. Well, I just want to say how much I appreciated that that meeting even happened, and um, and my apologies for not being able to be there. But I and I, I I do hope there's other opportunities. But it it really is great that that happened and came together. And I'm glad to hear Will was there and others. So that's great. <laughs> Um, so thank you. And so Dr. Uh, Rhodes, do you, you know, you're, I, I'm so used to calling you Irv and your, um, tagline here is, is Dr. Irv Rhodes, which I know of course, but, um, so now I'm going to call you that <laughs> Dr. Rhodes, would you mind giving us the, um, update there on the census? Well, the, um, uh, some of the information was in the packet and uh, I must admit, admit that, you know, I'm really impressed with the work of the Donahue Institute and what they've been able to do. Uh, the, uh, in order for us to move ahead now, uh, it's in the hands of uh, the town manager. He's been given that proposal uh, from the Donahue Institute. That proposal would uh, allow the Donahue Institute to move forward it would give us an extraordinary means of looking at the African-American population here in Amherst on a census block by block uh, nature and also uh, looking at it from a, a um, geographic point of view, as well as giving us tools uh, for the committee itself or for individual town members or anyone else to use the tool to look at where African Americans are situated in this town. Uh, once we have that in our hands, and once it's completed, uh, uh, my thought is that, that we go to where Dr. Shabazz has always talked about, uh, in terms of getting people boots on the ground to individual interviews to complete the census of African Americans in this town. This gives us an incredible opportunity to do that. Uh, we're, you know, African Americans around 2,300 uh, in Amherst, and those are the people who actually identify as being African, Black African American. They identify, they have identified themselves that way via the census to the census worker or via uh, a, a form coming from uh, the census. They have identified. So there's, we know that there are 2,300 people in Amherst who identify as Black African Americans. It's now up to us to track them down. And I will say I was really impressed. Um, and I think it's probably we can add this. Actually, I'd have to talk to I don't know how the, it works um, in terms of um, like 
proposals like this that include budget items, but I, I think if everybody could see this, it would be really great because I was very, very impressed with what they put together. I was really um, encouraged by the price that they offered to do this at. Um, and, and so thank you, Irv, for, for getting that. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a part of the packet, but if it isn't a part of the packet, that proposal should be made available to all of the uh, members of AHRA because it's an impressive package and, and they're, they're, the charge for this is like $3,500. I think that's what they're charging. Right. And just to say that um, we, if you keep in mind, in addition to our $210,000, we had the money that town manager Bob right. had set aside from us last year, basically, um, of about, I think it's 6,000 or, or something yeah. in that range. So yeah. um, Jennifer, were you going to say something in relation to this? Yeah, I don't remember seeing the part of it about the proposal. Like, I don't remember that being sent to me, but perhaps it did. You can uh, give it, get it to Jennifer or I can do it. I'm forwarding it to you right now, Jennifer. I have it right here. Um, that would be great. If you could just check with Paul about, it was only sent, I think it was sent to Paul and myself, but I, um, yeah, so I'm going to send it to you right now. And then if we can kind of, um, Done. I'm not sure who sent it, but if you send something to Paul, that doesn't mean that I'm going to necessarily see it, right? No, so if no, it needs I, to go really, in the packet, I, yeah, you, you I, need I to see me. What I should have done, I sent it to Paul and Michelle, and my thought was that Michelle would then get it to you if she thought it was appropriate. And anyway, there you go. You, know, you did the right thing, Herb, and right, that well, you know, you know that, that was on me to. Um, and again, I'm still not. Um, I don't know why I'm having like a bit of a, a, a concern about whether or not that document would be part of a public record. I, 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 something is raising a flag for me, but I don't know what it is. Jennifer, yeah. Anything that you send to Paul can get called out as a public records request. So it just doesn't matter at that point. <laughs> um, and anything that this group is going to have any kind of discussion on any document that supports the discussion needs to be part of the packet. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. My apologies on that. So you have it now, Jennifer. I did just forward it to you. Um, all right. Great. So ooh, great update there. Um, is there anything else about uh, any other BAM related updates, any future BAM work updates or anything like that that should be reported? Well, I'll, um, I can hazard something else. Um, you know, the, the, the idea is uh, how to invite members of that 2,228 uh, or 2,300 as uh, Dr. Rhodes rounds, rounds up, how to find ways to really reach them, to engage in this discussion of repair and what, what comes up for them in thinking about how do we repair the harm from this legacy of systemic anti-Black racism. Um, and that's in our genes, as we say, that's epigenetic. Um, what makes sense? What comes up? And one idea that, um, is, is in terms of, you know, small gatherings, small, both with public health concerns in mind um, and small in term in-person gatherings in terms of, you know, an understanding of our culture as African heritage people. And in talking with Jennifer about this, she made the point that, you know, through 2022, uh, I'm sorry, through 2021, at least, the, the 
the guidelines of the town of Amherst, you know, is, is not promoting large in-person gatherings. Um, and I get that. But as we go into 2023, and if, you know, people are properly vaccinated and booster shots and, uh, you know, care is made with where we meet and ventilation and how we meet, maybe it's possible to start with groups of 40 to 50 at a time out of that 2,300 to come and discuss and to begin to engage because you know just the email just the the email contact or going through our public media uh like Amherst media or newspapers in town I don't think we're I don't think that jibes with the culture that I know where people can look at each other feel each other, talk to each other, um, have a sense of each other's, you know, intentions and tone. And, and, um, and so, you know, that's where the idea has come up with, you know, looking at a venue where we could gather in small groups, uh, break bread, uh, you know, have a beverage, and, and, and have some, some discussion of these matters to engage and to get, to begin to draw the ideas um, of folks. So I just wanted to, to see that out there once again. Um, I hope people don't see that as being somehow um, divisive or uninclusive. It's just a matter of how, if, if we're talking about a specific community that has been harmed, how do we engage with that community to talk about repair, restitution, restoring on this municipal level? How do we begin to talk about it? What's, what's possible to imagine? So I, I just wanted to, to see that idea back out there that I hope it's something that this assembly could, could think about, to think about how to support. Uh, I personally feel uh, you know, a small amount of, of funding for those kinds of gatherings of people is as, as important, if more important, than tier one, tier two consultants and sending ambassadors out to knock on doors or whatever else we may have in mind. I think those kinds of, uh, of, of gatherings are, are just as valid and just as important. So I'll, I'll put that out there. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. That Really, thank you for sharing that, Dr. Shabazz. Um, and uh, depending on how we choose to move forward, um, I think that that is something that could, as you and I have talked about, happen in the very near future in terms of that sort of first phase of really beginning for those things to, to, to happen. Um, and I appreciate what you said. Sorry, just one second, Dr. Dr. Rhodes. Um, I appreciate what you said about the public health issues surrounding that and how to be safe about it and all of that kind of thing too. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Dr. It's important to realize that one of the things, I'm really excited about this because one of the things that this, uh, that Donahue will be doing is filtering out students. So that when we look at that 2300, it might be only 2,000, we're not sure, but they are going to be filtering out students uh, from this. Uh, and that's, a, and I'm really excited about that. And then, you know, to come back to what Dr. Shabazz is saying, that res what you're saying resonates with me because that has not happened in this community. We have not had gatherings, small gatherings, of African-Americans who can come together and talk about Amherst and their experience with Amherst and bring the kinds of information that everyone has been talking about to four so that we can utilize it. Everyone says what they're talking, uh, they, they're speaking for the African-American community. Well, I mean, you know, uh, unless they uh, have, have uh, completed some miracle that we don't know of, that can't be true. But this will allow us 
to tap into that. And, and so I'm excited about the possibility. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. I am always excited about community outreach and engagement. So yes, but um, also I, I think in addition to what Dr. Shabazz says, and I was away for some of that, so sorry, but just meeting people at where there are, there are plenty of events that happen that have a majority, if not all of the black community there where we can interact with them there. And these things are already set in motion or they're already there um, where we have an opportunity to, speak with the black community. So I think that's just an additional way to reach out to people as well. And the ambassador program, I think is actually, you know, changing from the COVID ambassadors to more community based ambassadors. So that might be able to be of assistance as well without the reparations um, assembly having to create that or a consultant to create that. And I think that the community outreach, regardless if there's a consultants involved or not, is absolutely, they would need to do the same thing, so. That would truly be ideal if the ambassador program that's already grassroots doing that, that's, yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right. Well, thank you for all of those updates. And Hala, just want to check in to see if you wanted to add anything to the BAM update. I was unfortunately at a funeral, so I was not there. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I am going to have to jump off because two additional Dr. Rhodes's want my attention, my daughter and my son and they are insistent that I talk with them. So okay. please excuse me. Or can we still continue um, without Dr. Rhodes, Jen? We just can't vote. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, no decisions can be made. And, I'll, and I'm not necessarily sure that I'll stop recording because then it looks a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Transparent, so. Um, well, we're pretty we can close. continue the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Hala would. Oh, I'm sorry. You said yes, and I'm sorry for your loss, and um, and thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, so we can basically we would be moving now to our second public comment period. If there is any public comment, and then member reports, um, and then. Uh, I did hear an agenda item or two, but I think that we'll do scheduling via email just so that we can incorporate everybody into the um, mix there. Um, so if we're ready to move on from the BAM update, then we can go ahead and move on to our second public comment period. Just a thumbs up if that works. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'm not gonna read the disclosure again, um, but this is, well, hold on, let me see if anybody, Nobody, oh, okay, we do have a public comment um, uh, here indicated as LM. So I'm going to go ahead and LM, you should be able to speak. Yes, hi. It's Lauren. Oh, Mills. Lauren. <laughs> hi, <yay. laughs> I'm so glad it's you. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, it's me. <laughs> How are you? Awesome. Hey, everyone. Yes, um, I wanted to um, just say uh, a few thoughts um, because I know I'm one of the few uh, newly, uh, I still consider myself a newly of Amherst and, um, and I'm just glad to be here and um, witnessing, you know, this work that you all are doing. Um, for me, uh, I've shared some of my ideas already and um, sent them through BAM, sent them through email of like uh, different um, things that a reparations fund could be used for. Um, and still I have to go back to, to the question of when I look at the charge of AHRA, the um, African Heritage Reparations Assembly, 
it's it says to develop reparations proposals. And so it's still, you know, hard for me to visualize from, you know, the conversations that you've you've all had of what what are those proposals or you know what 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 are the actual proposals that that we are going to to work on i know that um uh, dr rhodes he was focused on like the housing and um there are some other things that have come up in the um in your assembly's discussions but for me I guess what I'm I'm trying to clarify and and share is that it would just be good to as a community member to know you know are 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 you coming are you going to actually come up with actual proposals like for example a house a, a housing um idea or housing plan. Um, where I live, um, it's affordable housing. And it was mentioned to me that they put in a bid for more affordable housing, this specific management company. How how would the the reparations assembly or um, AH, AHRA, how would they put forward a proposal like that? Is that proposal coming from uh amongst the members or is it coming from outside like i i just feel like there is not enough clarity as a as a community member that i i haven't found that clarity and um i i just would like to also you know add that you know when we think of a uh, reparative work it, to me, it's not just, um, yes, it's, it's to um, repair those who have been hurt, which we know in, 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 in specifically Amherst, we are talking about, and in the US, we're talking about um, people of African descent, Black African Americans who identify that way. But I still envision work um, reparative healing um, projects that will still encompass and include everyone. And so I, I just feel like we have to set like a foundation, like to make sure that whatever we're putting money towards, it's, you know, a, a way that is not so narrow it's it's like it's coming like a a root a root and a tree growing and we see that the 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 tree and the roots are rooted in repetitive justice and coming forth from from African Americans you know you know coming from from that place but it's growing out into all of you know the community um, and I I think that would be a great mind shift for for everyone to have the, to realize that you know African Americans can come from a place of abundance and and you know and just a place of abundance and um, so I would just like to I don't know if I went over three minutes but but I would just like to say also that um, if there was a, just a simple proposal of like land that is designated for, you know, you know, African American work projects that is connected to reparative justice. Like you could plant trees, fruit trees. Um, it could be like just a healing place that people could come to. But um, I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just going on, but I, I just feel like whatever the projects are, they have to, yes, be rooted in reparative justice, but they also have to be a way for, you know, the community to see that that liberatory experience. Um, 
and yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. If there's anyone else who would like to speak at public comment, please raise your hand. Okay, so um, this would be our uh, member reports. And um, earlier in the meeting, I had talked about if, if anybody would like to offer anything um, in response to what I said earlier in the announcement about Dr. Jemison's resignation to make an offering with that. Um, I know um, that would be, uh, this would be the place to do it. And I also sent an email about uh, that seventh member, the vacancy that we were talking about earlier. And so the member reports um, would be where if you have feedback to offer in this meeting right now, this is the place to do it. Of course, um, any input that you have on that, if it's specific, or general, um, please feel free to send to me with a copy to Jennifer and even town manager Bockelman if you wanna speak directly with him um, since he makes the appointments for this. Um, but I'd love to hear any suggestions or recommendations you have with respect to that. Yes, Jennifer. So the town manager sent out another press release in regards and included because he was sending out a press release in regards to key boards and committees and vacancies on those. And so uh, AHRA is included on that in which I actually probably inadvertently sent them to all of you because I have a group of individuals that I send um, boards and committees and job uh, vacancies to for outreach. So that's a part of outreach that's being done. Yeah, and I, I didn't get a chance to look at that email, but I did I did come through to me, so I did see it. Um, thank you. And this isn't the really the I just I just want to note that there's a lot of um, engagement opportunities right now between the community safety and social justice between our group and it looked like others as well. So um, if spread the word, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> I, um, I said this privately, but I will say it publicly that I was in awe and inspired by Dr. Jemison. Um, just her presence, her intelligence, her everything made me want to be a better me. And I really am grateful for the service she seeded into what we're doing and who she is. So thank you. She did tell me that wasn't the end of her being in local government. So hopefully there's some truth to that and she'll join in another capacity. Yeah. And I think she's gonna continue to, you know, um, to advise uh, and provide input um, for this assembly. So anything else for a member report before we move I on? Will, yeah. I will join in to, uh, Second, everything and concur with everything that uh, uh, Hala Lord uh, presented. And um, to just add that I would hope that if there is an opportunity uh, or in these opportunities we're talking about of bringing together folks that maybe one of them uh, could, could one be a, a place to thank her for the time of her service on this particular work, but also to perhaps invite her to speak um, coming from her own um, you know, background as a, as a medical doctor about the, the, the report that's recently come out and the idea of the epigenetics of, of, of the harms that um, we are presently living with. Uh, as, as people of African descent in the United States of African heritage uh, people and uh, would love to, to have an opportunity to visit with her and talk with her about that and, and, and share even with others who, who could hear more about that um, as, we, as we look at the harm report and think about the harm report and how it, it, it can inform our work here in Amherst. Thank you. 
Yeah, and thanks for mentioning the harm report. I, I think that um, if I have it, I can send to Jennifer. I think adding that to our list of items to be included on the website would be great. So I'll make sure to forward that. Okay, um, so Hala, did you put your hand up again? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on then to upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules. I, I did hear a couple things that I jotted down, but if there are other items, I think the meeting schedule we're going to put off to email, but if there are particular agenda items that have not been mentioned, um, please go ahead and mention them now. And just to recap, what I had um, was to um, come back to review the reset plan, the potential of extending. Um, where are we now with respect to our fund and our funding? Um, and then the the once folks get a chance to look at the um, the uh, excuse me the census proposal bringing that back uh, into the BAM update next time we meet. Was there anything else, Jen? I don't know if you caught something different. Okay. <laughs> that good? <laughs> All right. Um, great. So there are no other topics that I did not reasonably anticipate. So I um, will go ahead and move at, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer. So I, yeah, no, you guys don't have an upcoming events section on here. So we'll have to include that moving forward. But now is the time when there's lots of events that are starting to kick off for um, the town and the community. So one is that December 10th is Human Rights Day. And so as usual, the Human Rights Commission will be reading the deck. Well, the counselors will come and read the 2021 proclamation for Human Rights Day. But then tradition is that the Human Rights Commission and the community members read the Declaration of Human Rights and a visual um, candle event. Wonderful. And what time is that and where is it? Mm -hmm. That'll be at 6 p.m. on Friday, December 10th um, on the North Common at the Mary Maple. Awesome. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Kwanzaa's coming at the end of December. Yep. <laughs> and we'll we'll get more to you all on that. What's shaping up for that? It's um, something we approach on a region-wide basis, and we have checked in and heard from, from folks in, in Holyoke and Springfield and other surrounding areas. And so we'll, we'll be updating as that calendar fills out for the seven days uh, from uh, the 26th of December to January 1. Wonderful. It's amazing how I, I feel like we were just there, like it, it was a year ago and it's just the time has really flown by. <laughs> All right, so if there is nothing else, um, then I will move to adjourn the meeting at 8.11 p.m. Second. All right, <laughs> good night. Thank you, everyone. See you soon.